Hello friends, uh, in this video I will talk about dynamic games of complete information. Recap, quick recap of the concepts. We'll, we have seen two player games, Nash Equilibrium, Dominant Strategy and Dominated Strategies, Normal Form of a Game and Matrix Representation, Mixed Strategy Equilibria. I highly recommend that if you are seeing this video for the first time and you have uh, no background on game theory, Please go through my old videos, previous videos on all these concepts and then come to this video. So dynamic games of complete information or the representation format typically is game tree. Let's recap uh, sequential games quickly. Sequential uh, games are games where moves and strategies are following a particular order and uh, what we analyze here is complete and perfect information that means player know the entire history of what happens thus far complex sequential move games are most easily represented in extensive form so the typical representation is a game tree an example of sequential move game is chess Let's take an example, uh, a classic example from a real world uh, case study. I am sure you may have uh, heard of the movie E.T. So in the movie E.T. Extraterrestrial, a trail of Reese's Pieces, one of the Hershey's brand chocolates, Hershey's chocolate, is used to lure the little alien into the house. As a result of the publicity created by this sale of Reese's Pieces doubled, allowing Hershey's to catch up with the rival Mars. Now this is the known story. Now behind the scene, Universal Studios original plan was to use a trail of Mars M and M chocolates and uh, charge Mars 1 million for the product placement. However, Mars being a leader in that area at that time, they uh, do turned down that offer, presumably because it looks like 1 million is very high for such an advertisement. The producers of ET then turned into Hershey who accepted the deal which actually turned out to be a favorable deal for them and unfavorable to Mars. Now I am sure you are still wondering why. Let's formally analyze this problem by taking some numbers. So suppose publicity from M&M produce Product placement increases Mars profit by 800k, decreases Hershey by 100k. And publicity from Reese's Pieces product placement increases Hershey's profit by 1.2 million, decreases Mars by 500 because that increase in Hershey essentially come from other players, right? Maybe a kid who used to like Amanda will now say, after seeing the movie, I want uh, this particular chocolate. So the parent who used to buy a Mars chocolate may go and now buy from Hershey, for example. And no product placement if both of them did not place business as usual, assuming that the producers did not go to a third guy. Now, how do we represent such a game? Because this is a sequential activity, right? In this game involved sequential activity where the producers went to Mars first, followed by Hershey, so extensive form games is also known as tree form games best to describe games with sequential actions decision nodes indicate what players player is to move and uh, branches denote possible choices end node indicate each player's payoff and a game is solved by backward induction which we'll see later in this video if i represent the previous chocolate war game in a tree this is how the tree will look like the tree can be drawn horizontally or vertically, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a tree, that is enough. So Mars, by that offer means, uh, they have to pay 1 million, they will get 800k profit, so net is minus 200. And uh, without doing anything, Hershey will lose its 100k worth customers, so minus 100. When Mars did not buy, Hershey is given a chance. If Hershey also did not buy, it is business as usual, 0, 0. If Hershey did of, uh, agree to the offer, Mars will lose 500 for doing nothing. 
and her share will get 200 profit so 1 million and 1.2 million return so the net worth is 200 K now how do we analyze the game the game is analyzed by backward induction which essentially means go to the subtree here the subtree is Hershey starting with Hershey if Hershey is at this position for him 0 or 200 so Hershey will choose buy because he will get a profit of 200 now Mars should anticipate that if I did not buy Hershey will end up buying if Hershey buy my profit is minus 500 if I buy my profit is minus 200 so anyway a loss is inevitable so let me at least minimize my loss by not giving that chance to Hershey so a lack of lack of a game theoretician may be created a problem for them yeah just joking okay so in this example the real outcome should have been Mars buying it and not giving that choice to Hershey because if he give that choice to Hershey he will have a bigger loss So equilibrium strategies are H choosing to buy, knowing that move Mars will choose buy. So the learnings from this example is think about your competitor. Timing matters, who is given first chance, who is given second chance may be very important in such a game. Part of the benefit to Mars was to keep the opportunity away from its competitor. Let's take another example, an entry game, airline war in 1990s. Uh, this is uh, very common in uh, even now. It's not uh, only 1990s. Any time it's a relevant example. So German domestic sector where Lufthansa is a monopolist. Government had a deregulation by which British Airways is considered entering the market called as Dosche BA. Lufthansa threatened for a price war saying if you enter I will slash the prices to 10% only 10% charges was this a credible threat does it mean uh, British Airways should not enter from to the market <coughs> let's analyze it this is an example of a typical uh, challenger incumbent game so the incumbent monopolist faces the possibility of an entry by a challenger Challenger may choose to enter or stay out. If the challenger enters, the incumbent can choose either to accommodate or to fight. The payoffs are common knowledge. <coughs> so you see here, if the challenger is out, incumbent has an advantage. So two. And uh, maybe the challenger continues to get some profit one now if challenger is in and uh, incumbent is accepting ch the challenger is at a favorable position he is going to make some extra profit than he being out and incumbent uh, get something so two comma one and if challenger is incumbent is fighting with the challenger uh, they both probably will lose the whole game customers will only get benefited not the companies now in this game now challenger will look at the sub game what incumbent will choose if I am giving him a chance if I am in if I am in the better for a incumbent is to accommodate me because he will get at least two sorry one instead of zero so knowing he is go not going to fight with me I will go in because in will give me 2 and out will give me 1 so the threat is not credible another example is sequential move matching penny each of the two players has a penny player 1 first choose to whether to show the head or tail after observing player 1's choice player 2 chooses to show head or tail both players know the rules if two pennies match player 2 wins otherwise player 1 wins now can you tell me what player 2 will show yeah player 2 will show only head because if it is head player 2 will choose head if it is tail player 2 will choose tail because he has advantage of being the second player and seeing the history so this is a very vicious game or you can only play with a two year old kid so 
so dynamic games or sequential games of complete information has a set of players and who moves when and what action choices are available what do players know when they move and the players payoffs are determined by their choices all these are common knowledge among the players the extensive form representation specifies players when each player has a move what they can do each other at their opportunity to move and what each player know at each of his opportunities to move the payoffs received by, uh, for the combination of moves that could be chosen by players they can be they, there is also a perfect information where all previous moves are observed before the next move is chosen typically represented using game tree so this is a uh, typical uh, tree concept not specific to game there's a path there's a node there's an edge uh, which are all familiar to you if you know uh, trees there is length of a tree a length of a path number of edges is length of a path and the first node is called root node there is a successor and a predecessor for example x7 is a successor of x3 and x3 is a predecessor of x7 the terminal nodes are the nodes that uh, gives you the payoff in case of a game tree x4 x5 x7 x8 and x6 are terminal nodes here any node other than terminal node represents a player a path from the root to terminal node represents a complete sequence of moves which determines a payoff at the terminal node we can also represent a static game as a game tree this is useful when uh, typically a game involves some steps which are simultaneous some steps which are sequential so a tree can be used as a way of representing both information where the dotted line here represents that prisoner one does not know which of the two nodes he is in so he does not know what prisoner 2 has chosen he knows prisoner 2 selection is over but he doesn't know what is it so this is an example of way of representing a static game as a game tree do you recap can you recap what is a strategy it's a player's complete plan of action it specifies feasible action for a player in every contingency in which the player might be called on to act and uh, pay off a combination of strategies will give what each player will get and that is called pay off for the utility head if he choose play head i choose head if he choose tail head if head and tail if tail like that go and find the equilibrium so this is to show you that you can represent a sequential game in a matrix form a simultaneous game in a uh, game tree representation both are possible another uh, example of a sequential game there is a there are two players micro and macro uh, they have to choose some action but uh, assume let player a choose first we have to represent this in a game tree because that is the best way to represent a sequential move game now you can see here if player a chooses micro what will player b choose micro means 2,1 macro means 0,0 so he will choose micro that means player uh, a will get 2 player b will get 1 so player a knows i will get 2 if i choose micro if i choose macro i will end up getting macro because 0 is less than 1 so knowing micro will give me 2 macro will give me 1 what should be my best response my best response should be micro so i know player b will choose micro so this is an explanation for how we look at a sub game understand that equilibrium and then propagate that backward to find out uh, what should be the ultimate strategy by the previous player so the second stage here is known as sub game i have already told you in multiple examples so the example uh, explanation which i said suppose that player a chooses macro player b should choose macro player a chooses micro player b choose micro 
So the first player has an advantage and he can choose end up choosing my Assume it is a simultaneous game. I do not know the choice. Then I represent these two using by connected uh, line between player B's choices. So we are originally back to our uh, mixed strategy equilibrium. We have to apply the principles that we learned on how to calculate a mixed strategy and find the answer. Let me take another uh, classic example, a movie based example called the uh, movie Air Force One. Have you heard of that movie? So the terrorist hijack Air Force One and take the president hostage. Can we write this as a game? Wow. So this is a sample representation of how potentially that uh, scenario looks like. If terrorists don't even take hostage, they have nothing to lose, nothing to gain and assume there is a safety that uh, president continues to feel. Now if terrorists take hostage, president can potentially negotiate or don't negotiate. If president negotiate, terrorists at, are at advantageous position, so 1, and government losing some money, so minus 0.5. Now don't negotiate, terrorist has an option to either let that president go or kill him. If they kill him, they are at minus 0.5 because they have to spend a lot of money and effort and thinking, and now they have to even hide for long time not to caught by the police whereas if they don't kill and let him go they are at even a higher loss here when they kill the president they at least are happy that all their effort did not go in vain there is something that happened even though it was not what they anticipated but when they don't kill terrorists get nothing at all they are at a terrible loss and uh, president is at an advantageous position his life is saved now if you are a terrorist what will you do let's look at the sub game the sub, sub game most in the third stage best response for the terrorist is to kill because minus 0.5 is better than minus 1 now knowing that so knowing that president should negotiate because president knows if i do not negotiate it is minus one for me my life is gone if i negotiate there is a chance that i can survive at the cost of some money or something whatever now terrorist knows if they take hostage they will get one if they do not zero so they will rather go and try to do take hostage so the equilibrium movies take hostage and negotiate now Suppose that a constitutional amendment is passed ruling out hostage negotiation. So as a commitment, uh, uh, as a commitment, government has uh, made this constitutional amendment to the country. That means the negotiate option is ruled out. Now what will happen? Now terrorist knows if they if they go to the sub game minus 0.5. They, if they kill minus 0.5 so take hostage will lead to minus 0.5 don't take hostage at least it's good they can find some other way to make a deal with government so without the possibility of a negotiation the new equilibrium becomes no hostage so solving sequential game is typically to solve uh, backward uh, by looking at the sub game perfect Nash equilibrium so you have a tree, find out the subgames, find their equilibrium, map it to the next subgame, go until the root to determine your uh, uh, game's outcome. So subgame is nothing but a game tree, a, the branch of the original game tree. And the information set in the branch coincide with the information set of the original game and cannot include nodes that are outside the branch. Payoffs are all same as the original game tree. And proper subgame whose root is alone is a sub uh, information set. And strategy profile that is in Nash equilibrium in every proper subgame, whether or not that subgame is reached along with the equilibrium path of play. Backward induction is used to solve such games. Starting from the smallest subgame, connect the terminal nodes of the game tree, determine the action that a rational player would choose at that action tree and then repeat until there are no action nodes left we have seen a lot of examples doing backward induction in this particular example presentation 
to summarize we learned games of non cooperative games and static games of complete information sequential games of in, uh, complete information in the next presentation in the next video i am going to introduce you about uh, the concept of repeated games a very brief introduction and then we move forward from there with other concepts thank you very much have a nice day